Hey, this is Steve from Property Hive, and today we're going to be looking at the property import add-on for Property Hive. The, the import add-on essentially allows you to take properties from third parties uh, in, a, in a number of formats um, and essentially import them into Property Hive to save having to add the, add the properties manually. So what I've got here is I've got a blank setup of um, WordPress. We've already got Property Hive installed and all I'm going to do is go through the process of activating it, installing it and then um, setting it up based on the, the format of the import you're receiving. So what we can do, we've already got Property Hive set up as we can see. What we're going to do is we're going to go to plugins and install plugins. And in this case we've already got it installed along with a number of other add-ons but the one we're interested in is the property import add-on. And all we're going to do is we're going to activate it and upon activation what we'll get is a new option under the property hive menu on the left that reads import properties. So if we go into there, so we have two types of import. The, the first one is manual, so that's a one-off import. Uh, this is great if you're taking your properties uh, from, a, from a third party and you want to get them into property hive initially uh, and then you're going to manage, manage them manually from then on. Um, so the manual is a one-off and all that will happen is once you click continue is you'll go through a step-by-step -step wizard where you choose the file, you validate it uh, and then the, the final step is the properties actually get imported with a, with a log of what happened. Um, the, the more interesting aspect to the, to the add-on is the automatic side of things. So this is where um, you will be on a regular basis taking properties from a third party and what will happen is automatically every every so often you can set the set the interval but every so often the properties will get imported into into property hive automatically so this is the route we're going to look at primarily so all i'm doing again it's, it's a simple step-by-step -step wizard we're going to choose automatic and click continue and then we get presented with the the available formats now this this list of formats is always expanding so by the time you, you view this video there might be extra formats but what we're trying to do is we're trying to support the, the most common formats. BLM was first, seeing as that's the industry standard. And then we've added some extra formats for people who use um, the leading property software in the UK. So let's look at each format individually. We'll start with BLM. And what you'll notice is each time we select a different option, we get different, um, different settings based on the format. So the options are all relevant to the format that you've selected. So in the case of a BLM file, so this is where um, you will be getting BLM files sent to you from a third party via FTP into a folder on your server. So in this case we've selected BLM and what we can do is we can set the path of where the BLM will be sent to. Now when you activate the um, add-on the, the add-on will automatically add a designated folder for you and set this path in here um, on your behalf. You don't have to use it, but it's there to, to assist. Um, so this one is put into WB content, uploads, PH import. Further down, what we've got is the branches. So in a BLM file, what would normally happen is uh, you would have a branch code. And now branch code is normally a five to six digit number. Uh, number or set of characters and it allows you to determine which property belongs to which branch. So in, in this case we've got two offices set up, you might only have one but in this case we've got two and they are London and Birmingham and these might have different branch codes so one might be 12345, the second one might be 54321. If you don't have a branch code entered or if we receive a branch code that we don't have set up here, it will assign it to the primary office that's under settings. You can choose the primary office and um, any, any properties that don't fall into that category will then get assigned to that office. Further down we have the additional options and here we have things like how often do we want the import to run. We've got hourly, twice daily or daily. Uh, if you're only receiving the BLMs daily, then daily will be fine. If you're unsure on when they'll be sent, or maybe you get three, four, five BLMs sent a day, then maybe hourly will be better. Uh, if a BLM isn't received, it just ignores it. Nothing, nothing happens. 
start running immediately. So is is this is this on or off when we when we continue when we finish this wizard? Um, we can pause and start it again at any time. So the, it might be best to leave it off when you're setting it up for the first time, um, just so then you've got a chance to configure everything else and then start it. But um, no harm in starting it immediately. And then the last option is whether to remove properties automatically. So the way the input will work is if we receive a property that we've got in WordPress, but then we don't no longer receive it in the in the import, um, that to us means that we assume it's off the market. So the property will be set to off the market automatically. So that's just a way to override that. Maybe you want to keep old property on the website. Maybe you want to keep sold properties in like a sold gallery or something. Um, so that's that's just there to, to give you the option whether to remove them automatically. Uh, if you don't remove them automatically, then you obviously will have to go in at a later date to remove them manually. Um, but like I say, it's good if you have a sold gallery or a recently sold section. So let's continue to the next step. And these steps are all common regardless of the format. So if we choose an XML format later on, we'll get exactly the same steps. Um, in this case, what we're doing is we're mapping the 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 options in Property Hive to the options that we receive in the in the imported file. So if we take a BLM for example, they have a predetermined set of values, but in Property Hive we might have custom custom fields set up. So as a quick example, uh, in this availability section, they've got um, under offer. We might not have under offer, so we might want to assign it to the most closest option. Uh, so this this page is really simple. All we do is look at the values down the left hand side that we're going to be receiving or potentially be receiving, and on the right hand side is we set the um, we set the equivalent value that we've got set up in Property Hive. So, so all these can be set under settings, and then there's a custom fields tab. So, if if you want to amend the list that appear in this in this drop down, it's easy to do so from there. So, like I say, it's just a case of going down the left hand side. So, available might be for sale. Sold SDC might be sold SDC. Sold SDC or just sold SDC. Under offer, etc., etc. If if there's one in the drop down that doesn't match, um, you can either leave it blank, or you can assign it to the the nearest one. And what we've got here is it's um, it's broken into sections. So we've got each custom field as one section. So we've got availability, we've got property types, quite a few of them for the BLM format. Um, then we've got price qualifiers, tenure, furnished. Um, and again, all the way down, it's just a case of um, selecting the, the most relevant option. If you're getting a bespoke BLM or a bespoke format that doesn't, or that does contain uh, like a bespoke option, we can add additional mappings here. So if we were to receive number, uh, number six, um, we could add six and then map it to the closest one. Once we're done, we click finish. And that is essentially the, that, that import set up. And if we've chose to cite it automatically, that will start running from now going forward. If we return to the main import property screen, we can now see we've got a list of the active automatic imports. So we can have multiple imports set up. Um, we might have we might be receiving BLMs from three different sources, or you might have sales properties from BLM and uh, lettings from expert agent, for example. So you can have multiple setup, each controlled individually and each controlled with their um, own settings. We can start, pause, resume them each individually as well, and each um, each each import that we set up also comes with logs. So once this starts running and processing files. Um, we get we get an output of logs that we can go and view. Um, we keep them for seven days, and they'll get cleared up automatically to prevent the server getting filled up. But it essentially allows us to see if if a property hasn't been imported for some reason, or maybe some photos are missing. Uh, what we can do is just go into the logs, view exactly what happened and when, and then see you know it, this property might not have been imported because it didn't have a price or a postcode, um, and it just helps you to, de to debug things like that. Um, like I say, we can add as many as we want, so if we used to go into automatic again, we'll just look at some of the extra formats here. So at the moment we've got Desres XML, and in that case we get an API key and an estate agency ID, and Desres will be able to provide that to you. We get expert agent XML, and in this case what happens is, is Property Hive will go off to an FTP directory and get a file and then and then process it. Again, expert agent would be able, would be able to give you these details. 
And finally, for Dupix XML, all we need is a URL to an XML file. And again, like the others, they'll be able to provide that to you. From that point forward, it's all the same. The If we choose Dupix XML and hit continue, the only thing that differs here is the, is the values. Um, so Dupix might have their own custom set of values. Um, the same with Des Resin Expert Agent. So they all differ slightly, but then the method the method is the same where you you have the the files formats on the left and the property hive options on the right that is essentially it with the import plugin pretty simple once you've got it set up it's just a case of um, leaving it to run essentially um, like I say you've got the logs there to see exactly what happened you can see when it last ran when it's next due to run and you can also um, start it pause it, resume it at any time. If we want to edit it at any point, we can simply click edit and then we're into the same process that we were in before, the step-by-step -step wizard. That pretty much covers it. So as you can see, pretty simple. Um, it doesn't take long to get set up, you know, maybe a few minutes. Once you've got the details from the third party, yeah, it's really straightforward. Um, and it doesn't affect any part of the, the rest of the property hive at all. There's no extra screens or it doesn't interfere with anything anywhere else. It's a self-contained place where you just manage your properties. And all that'll happen is, is once properties start to get imported, under the properties section, you'll then start to see them come in.